Hello Grid 11s, this section is called the ideal gas section. In this playlist, we'll be looking at a number of things relating to gas laws, ideal gases versus real gases, and Boyle's law. In this video, we'll be focusing on the motion of particles, the kinetic molecular theory relating to gases. Let's jump right into the video, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. According to your ATPs and your exam guidelines, you need to be able to do the following. And that is what we will be covering in this video. First things first, a little bit of grade 10 revision. Remember the kinetic molecular theory or the kinetic model of matter says that all matter is made up of particles. These particles are moving. They possess kinetic energy, which is how they move, and the movement determines the phase of matter. We covered three phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Obviously, in this video, we're going to be focusing on gas. Just as a means of recapping, in a solid state, the matter maintains a fixed volume, particles move very slowly, and they vibrate in fixed positions, such as over here. In a liquid state, the matter still maintains a fixed volume, but it takes on the shape of its container. The particles move slightly faster, and they are further apart. In a gas, this last image over here, the matter expands to occupy whatever the volume is. And we also learned this table that compares the three different states of matter. Remember for gases, the particles are very far apart relative to the other two states of matter. We also have very weak intermolecular forces between the particles. Now remember grade 11s, the intermolecular forces, those are the forces that exist between molecules that hold the substance together. So for example, the forces between a water molecule, H2O, and another water molecule. Remember, intermolecular forces are different to bonds. Now solids have the strongest intermolecular forces. Gases still have intermolecular forces, but they're weaker. There are larger spaces between the particles, which means that they have a low particle density. Remember, density can be calculated by taking the mass, divided it, dividing it by the volume. Gases also have particles that move around at high speeds, as we've mentioned, and it's because they have a high kinetic energy and they are compressible. We can compress gases. Also, what is important with regards to gases, which we will discuss further in a second, is that they exert pressure on the sides of the container because of collisions of particles. This is something that we'll get to. Another reminder from last year, the state that a substance exists in, so if it's a solid, liquid, or gas, depends on two things mainly. The kinetic energy of its particles. So remember we said gases have a very high kinetic energy. The particles move about very quickly, high speed, and the intermolecular forces between the particles. In a gaseous state, the intermolecular forces are present, but they're very weak. We can contrast this with solids, where the kinetic energy of the particles are lower, and the intermolecular forces between the particles are much stronger. As a reminder, kinetic energy determines how much the particles can move, it determines speed, and we'll look at the formula to calculate kinetic energy now. And intermolecular forces, remember they hold the molecules together in a solid and a liquid phase. Another very, very, very important thing in this section of work is how temperature relates to kinetic energy. So, Speed of the particles in a substance determines its kinetic energy. Here's the formula for kinetic energy, Ek, half times mass times velocity squared. Velocity is speed. So the faster the particles move, the higher the kinetic energy. And this is very, very important. The temperature of a substance is a measure of the particle's average kinetic energy. So when we say the average kinetic energy, that is a measure of the substance's temperature. So the higher the substance's average kinetic energy, the higher the temperature. It means the particles move faster, higher kinetic energy. So if a question in an exam says, describe the motion of individual gas molecules, you need to say the following. The molecules are in constant motion. They collide with each other and with the walls of the container. That happens continuously. There are forces of attraction between the molecules, but they are relatively weak compared to the forces in solids and liquids. And molecules in the gas move at different speeds. And the temperature is the average kinetic energy 
of the particles. So what I want you to do is in your mind, connect the terms temperature and average kinetic energy. Now, remember we say that gases exert pressure as a result of collisions of particles on objects. So when the little gas particles bounce around in the container, they hit the walls of the container, they hit each other, and this results in pressure. As you can see in this simulation, I'm pumping some gas particles into this container. And what's going to happen is, let's just make it a little bit smaller so I can show you. As the particles collide with the walls of the container, you can see that the pressure is increasing. Let's pump some more gas particles. There'll be more collisions with the sides of the container walls. Pressure is increasing. So that simulation that I just showed you was called a FET simulation. You can go play around with it yourself. You can find it on Google. But this is very important. You need to understand pressure of a gas. So you need to, according to your exam guidelines, be able to explain the pressure exerted by a gas in terms of the collisions of the molecules with the walls of the container. So this image over here is illustrating that the particles are colliding with each other and with the walls of the container. The more collisions per unit time, the greater the pressure. So here's an example of how you can be asked this in your exams. Using the kinetic molecular theory, which we've just gone over, explain the effect of an increase in temperature on the pressure of a gas. Now think about how those two would be connected, temperature and pressure. Now again, I want you to take a look at the simulation over here. You can see I have gas molecules inside my container. Here's the pressure over here. Here's the temperature over here. Now look what happens when I increase the temperature. I'm increasing the temperature. What do you notice according to the simulation? Let's see what you can notice. I don't know if you can tell, but obviously the pressure is, in is increasing. But what do you see inside the container? I hope that you are seeing that the particles are moving faster and faster. And you need to remind yourself what speed is connected to. The faster they move, their velocity increases, their kinetic energy increases. This is all because the temperature is increasing. And what does the increase in speed end up doing to the particles? So let's play the simulation. You can see that the increase in speed, although the simulation seems to be getting stuck, what we can see is that as they move about faster, they are hitting each other and hitting the walls of the container much more. There are more collisions. And because of this, the pressure increases. So this would be how you would answer this question. Four marks for your four points. And what do you think happens if we make the volume of the container smaller? So remember volume, think of volume as in the space that it occupies in three dimensions. So here I have a bigger volume. Here I have a smaller volume. What do you think is going to happen to the pressure inside the container? Again, we can refer to the simulation. So look at what happens over here. I'm decreasing the volume of the container. Take a look at what happens to the pressure over here. Okay, decreasing the volume of the container. I hope you can see that when I increase the volume of the container, the pressure decreases. When I decrease the volume of the container, making the volume smaller, pressure increases. So here is another image that illustrates that. What happens is as we decrease the volume of the container, we make it smaller, we increase the pressure. Why? Because there will be more collisions of gas with the units uh, with the walls of the container, more collisions per per square area per meter on the container walls. And this is what we refer to as Boyle's law, which we cover in other videos in this playlist.